Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to be putting a Traxxas center death in this uh, slash 4x4. Now, I could have this whole video done in 5 minutes or less, certainly with editing and time lapse, but I don't know what y'all like, what y'all want, right, in terms of video length, because my stuff's all over the place anyways. But um, I want to talk about something uh, with center deaths compared to a standard uh, slipper clutch setup. Now, what you're going to get out of me here is pretty much bare basics, because I'm not an expert on this stuff, but um, I just want to run some stuff by you here. This is not going to be a race truck. It's going to be a basher. And some people will go, well, you don't need a center diff. You just need to learn throttle control and this and that. And yes, that's 100% true. Throttle control will help tremendously in the way that your truck behaves for you. Like, it's possibly one of the most important things you can learn is throttle control. However... Even if you have throttle control, a slipper clutch setup is still a totally different world compared to a center diff. And here's why. If you have your, center, uh, your uh, slipper clutch set properly on hard impacts or on hard, hard acceleration, it's going to slip, grab, and then deliver all of your power to both differentials consistently. It's going to put the same amount of power here as it does here. And then from there, you get a power difference left to right because of the differentials in the front and back of your truck. That's with a slipper clutch. What this means is, in a race environment, which this is not a race truck, it's going to be a basher. But it also matters for bashing environments and things like that. You can get on it hard coming out of the corner, and it's going to constantly want to lift up that front end. Because what you're doing is putting the same amount of power front to rear. And if you have your clutch set too tight, even if you've got it to where it'll slip a little before it locks, you're still going to come up on RPM on that motor and it's gonna, the clutch is going to be locked and it's going to sit there and constantly try to lift that front end. What this means is your truck is unpredictable to a certain extent. If you're coming out of a slow corner and you're side by side with somebody and you want to hammer on it, your truck's going to lift the front end and it might walk left, it might walk right, or left, right. It doesn't matter because your front wheels are off the ground and you have no steering. So, for the sake of consistency, which you can get a little bit out of throttle control, but we all make mistakes sometimes. Maybe hit the gas a little too hard coming out of a corner. Front end lifts up and bam, you're off to the side of the track because you have no steering. It's either that or let off. Your truck comes down. You lose speed, you lose lap times, you lose consistency. Fighting with a truck because you have a slipper clutch is only going to hurt you when it comes to racing or in sometimes even bashing because your truck sometimes just won't do what you want it to do. With a slipper clutch, however, or uh, with a center diff, however, this is where things get interesting. Because with a slipper clutch, you can tighten it up, you can loosen it, and you can find that sweet spot. But with a center diff, all you have to do is take it out of the truck and put a different weight fluid in it. Now, this is what I'm running front and rear. I don't know what comes in this, but it's what's going to stay in it until I know whether I like it or not. But these things, compared to a slipper clutch, are almost infinitely tunable. You can put all sorts of different weight fluids in it. And you can get a lot of different reactions out of this compared to a slipper clutch. A slipper clutch, you can loosen it off to where your truck won't do wheelies. But then you won't have any acceleration because when you punch it, it's just going to constantly slip that clutch. This is a totally different animal in a totally different world because what you can do is make it to where it sends power front and rear. It sends different power front than it does rear just by tuning the fluids. So when you're coming out of a corner and you really punch it, instead of it wanting to pick up that front end because all the power is going to the rear, it's going to put some of that power to the front. It's going to bleed it off to the front of the truck. It's going to bias that power to the front of the truck. And instead of these rear tires just hooking and going, it's going to go, wait a minute, I got a lot of force back here. Let's put some to the front. Your truck's going to drop back down and you're just going to go. So you can be a lot more aggressive everywhere with a center diff compared to a slipper clutch. And the tunability is almost infinitely 
adjustable because of the different fluids that you can put in it. You can even mix and match fluids to make your own custom weights if you really want to. So, one more thing before we take this thing apart and put this diff in is just the action of this putting more force to the path of least resistance is going to save driveline components. With the slipper clutch, once it locks, it's locked. All that power is constant. If you hammer on it, all that power is going to the rear diff right here. And uh, you're going to blow out diffs. You're going to destroy driveline components, things like that. With this, because of the way it's built, just the way it is, as I stated, you're going to hammer on it. It's going to lift that front end. You're going to un unload those front tires. And when it does, this thing's going to go, oh, wait, that's easier to spin now. So it's going to send that power to the front. What this means is less stress on your diffs, less stress on your drive lines, less tr stress on your hex hubs out here, less stress on your, your materials that your rear tires are made out of. Basically, this, if you set it right, can completely save your entire rear drive line. And with a 4S system on this truck, I want to be as nice to this stuff back here as I can. So that's why I'm going with a center diff. There's a lot of race um, applications for one that make it a lot better than a uh, slipper clutch. But for me, it's the idea that it may help save the rear drive line back here if I don't put too thick of fluid in it. If you want a wheelie machine, load it up with the thickest fluid you can find. But if you want it to be a flat handling, just beautifully drivable car, you can make it do that too with this. So let's get busy taking this thing apart. And uh, I've already done this once on the channel, so we're just gonna time lapse this and uh, not worry with talking or anything like that. <coughs> That Allen uh, tool set there is starting to wear, so starting to get worn out. Oh, yeah. That, my friends, is why I never use Loctite, whether it be blue or red. Here we go. I ain't got any other choice other than to just some force into it. There it is. It either just broke loose or I stripped it. I think it just broke loose. Let's see. And just for clarification, yes, that was held in with blue Loctite. Woo! Well, you want to talk about a heart attack. That will not be getting Loctite on it anymore because, quite frankly, I'd rather it fall off while I'm running than never be able to get it off again. your old spur gear and slipper clutch assembly which is a shame because I just now put all this together and in here but this whoa hello will be tons better and more likely to hold up to 4s I'm, I'm sure this is actually like uh, if I'm not mistaken what would be in uh, I think the Haas and I think even the max uh, has one of these in the max is a 4s monster truck so uh this ought to be able to handle the power 
At least, I hope, we'll find out. I'm going to go ahead and take that off because we won't be needing it. Because the new uh, part for the Techno drive shaft replaces it, okay? Okay, so this is all in and seated properly. Uh, for some reason, it was a kind of a pain in the butt to get it to seat into that bearing, but it is, it is all right and put back together now. So now all we got to do is take it and probably be better to take this cover right here off because I'm going to have to rotate that spur gear to uh, like get it to line up with the, uh, the diff. All that's left now is those four screws and we're back together. And we are now running a center diff in a slash 4x4. So we have a, a little bit of an issue here. This is actually something I was worried about, but something I didn't think was really going to be a problem. What we have is somewhere in here, this spur is uh, slightly bottoming out. You can see where it's already been munched once before by the previous spur. Apparently hit it on a hard landing. So I'm going to take my Dremel and clean that up a little. See if it'll fit together a little better. These are probably not what this is meant for, but I don't know, nor do I care. <laughs> that was a bad idea. Oh, all in the eyes. Alright, so we just kind of ground that down a little bit it's kind of hot on bottom <laughs> and uh you'll see if it clears a little better now this is something that i was worried about but that i had totally forgot about when putting it back together so see how it all works now there we go now let's see what happens all right now we're clean all right good holes lined up Clipped in right on bottom. All right. This is what sometimes happens when you're running parts that aren't specifically meant for another truck. Uh, sometimes you just got to kind of clearance things yourself. We ought to be able to put these screws in now. And it uh, actually worked this time. All right, we are back together. I just got to put the uh, set screw in right here. And we'll have drive back to the front. <laughs> Let's get all this lined up. Just like with a uh, spur gear and slipper clutch assembly, there is going to be a flat point on this shaft. And that's what you want your uh, set screw to key into. You want it to ride against that flat point. Because that's where you want this thing to sit. There we go. And now, if I wanted to, just for an example, let me grab my old slash tire so I can show you. Right, here we go. Most people watching this probably know this already, but I don't care. 
I find it cool. Check this out. Let me go grab my other two. I'll show y'all something. This is this is really cool to me. So forgive me if this is annoying to you, but this is really cool to me. So now what we can do is hold on to the front. Well, that's some pretty <laughs> hold on. Hold on to the front and uh, see if I can't figure out a way to spin these. There we go. Now we have a diff in the center, much like we have for each wheel. We also have a diff for front to rear. So, pretty cool. So that's the uh, center diff installed on the slash 4x4. Pretty easy to do when you don't have material that you've got to grind away. Uh, I'm pretty sure it wasn't like an issue with fitment in the part in the truck. I had that place down there where the previous spur gear, because uh, you know chassis flex when they take a hard hit. So this spur gear had obviously dug in and munched up the plastic down there. So I think this was rubbing a little bit on it and uh, just causing it to not fully seat. But now we have a free rolling drive line, so we're good. All right, cool. That's it. Thanks for watching. See y'all next time.